Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here with the man, the myth, the legend, Luke Wyatt at First Bank Stadium after Vanderbilt's 38 to 21 loss to Mizzou. And Luke, it feels like the same story, rinse and repeat, as last week and a lot of other weeks this season. Talk to me about your thoughts about this game. Well, it was the same story as far as the result, obviously. I felt like, obviously, we didn't turn the ball over as much. I thought Ken did a good job. I think they protected him in the first half. That's why we didn't move the ball much because we had one good drive. But I think they felt like they wanted Ken to kind of get it, get his sea legs under him. And then the second half, we opened up a little bit. Great play fake on the long touchdown to Gillespie. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Junior Cheryl. And uh, they got Will Shepard more involved. I think in the first half, you may know this, it was the only targeted once or twice in the first half. Uh, I think so, yeah, one catch for eight yards. And he's the kind of guy on a day like this when you don't have <laughs> London Humphreys, he's got to be targeted 10 to 15 times. Uh, that's the only thing I have. And, and, and we still got, we got to figure out to have some semblance of a running game. Um, you know, we're getting maybe two, three yards in a cloud of dust, and that's about it. But the main thing in my thought is we can't cover. we got to bring extra folks. And when you bring extra folks, they're going to throw it over the top of your head. If you don't bring extra folks, they're going to throw it over the top of your head. So as a coach, uh, you got to try to find somebody to do it. Now, I, I don't want to blame Martell Hyde. He's a true freshman. He had a rough day. A lot of got those guys did. I think he made a point. Trudell Berry had a good day. But uh, – it's just not there. This team is not uh, doesn't have the confidence to win a football game right now. Yeah, and I feel like that confidence kind of carried over to the offense. Feels like they didn't want to take shots early and right. throw the ball down field. And I think that's really what did them in early. Not, Agreed. not many yards per play. And when they tried to run it to kind of compliment Ken Seals and get him going a little bit, they couldn't do it. They ran it up the middle, I think, four times in a row on first down. Yes. Didn't work any of those times, whether it was Patrick Smith, whether it was Chase Gillespie, whether it was Cedric Alexander. Nobody really got going on the ground, although Cedric Alexander was nice in the pass game. He was. Couldn't do a whole lot in the running game. It's, at some point, that's not the running back's fault. At some point, that's on the line for not getting pushed. But also, it has to go back to that running back position. You know, and you're right. We talk about it the first of the year, and you know, you were at practice as much or more than I was, or, or excuse me, and Billy and Chris. The biggest concern was corners, and it still is. But my, big, my biggest disappointment is the running game and lack thereof. And whether that's the offensive line or if it's a combination of both, I'm not sure. Uh, I just feel like this team still has a little meat on the bone. Who it'll be against, who knows? It's just like today, you know, I'm sure after Tennessee got blasted by Florida, they're thinking, wow, Kentucky just blasted and Ray Davis ran for two, whatever you run, 300, 250. Yeah, almost, yeah. So, you know, you, you played a really good team last week. We found that out today, I think. So Missouri is a good football team, but there again, until we have somebody that can cover people and we, or we bring blitzes and get there, then we're, it's, we're gonna have the same results. A word that keeps coming to my mind, or I guess a phrase, is complimentary football. Yes. And not only between the offense and defense, but between position groups. And I feel like that's kind of what's hindered this team offensively. You have the long passes, you have the explosive passing game, but the offensive line hinders that. The running game doesn't allow for that to be opened up. Defensively, you want to send the blitzes, you want to get pressure, but the cornerbacks aren't allowing you to get the pressure you want. Agreed. And you leave the cornerbacks on an island by not getting that pressure. So it doesn't just feel like the offense and defense aren't playing complimentary football. It feels like it's between position groups, and I don't know how to fix that, Luke. I, I, I don't either. And I, I said this earlier in the week, it's almost like the little bull in the dike. He'll put his finger in one hole, and the, other, the water shoots <laughs> through over here. That's what you've got, and, and Clark knows that. And his coaching staff knows that. I'm sure they're trying to develop schemes to help it. But at some point, kids have to make plays. And, you got, you know, my thing is, are they put in a position to make plays? Most of the time, I don't have a problem with that. It's just right now, we're not good enough. You know, we may be able to cover our receivers in practice because we know their route trees and all that. But uh, it's uh, there's, not, there's not much confidence with this group. Yeah. An analogy I thought of this week, it's a little different than yours, but it has the same kind of sentiment. It was Billy and Chris all offseason talked about this team's talented, they have speed. It feels like you're telling all your family members about how great your wife can cook. And then Thanksgiving. I heard you the other day. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah. she delivers a rubber turkey. <laughs> and that's kind of what it feels like with this team. We think the talent's in there somewhere. We've heard about it. And we've seen flashes of it individually, especially. We've seen London Humphreys make plays. We've seen Jaden McGowan and Will Shepard make plays. We've seen guys in the secondary make plays. Marta Height had a pick six earlier this year. Trudeau Berry made a really nice play in that end zone in one-on-one -on -one yes. coverage to get the first stop of the game for Vanderbilt. But it hasn't come together as a whole. And you haven't really seen what we thought this group kind of had, especially on the offensive line. We thought the continuity and the experience would really carry this group. And for the most part, it was decent last year. 
I don't know if I'm the most educated person on what it did last year, but it felt like it was a lot better than this year. That's not just a Ray Davis thing either. It felt like the pass blocking probably took a no, step you're back correct. as well. So. No, you're correct. And, and what's odd about that is it has been until the injuries have started to mount pretty much the same guys, which really dumb fouls. I, I, I don't get that. But I think as, as, a, as a Vanderbilt fan right now, what you're hoping for, you know, a lot of people, everybody wants to fire the coach and all that. I mean, and all I can tell you folks, and I know there's a few out there that totally disagree with me, think I'm state-run radio or whatever. All I want Vanderbilt to do is win. I, I love Clark, but if he ain't the answer, somebody else will be. Now, what Vanderbilt's got to do is at the end of this season, and I know we've still got six more games to cover, but they've got to decide in a situation. I know we had a kid that we lost to Wisconsin who was going to probably be a starting corner for us. We've got to somehow get a couple, at least a couple guys that can cover from us. Because if you don't, you're not going to, it's going to keep the same, the same chapter, different version. Yeah, what I'm a little afraid of is that, I mean, I guess this could work, but it feels like they might just run back Marto Height, Trudeau Berry, Walker, some of the younger guys and kind of hope they can take leaps and I'm not sure that's really the answer. Maybe you want to get a transfer to supplement that a little bit and get kind of B.J. Anderson and Tyson Russell moved on and tor turn towards the younger guys, which it feels like has happened out there. It is. But you've got to have some sort of veteran presence to kind of supplement those guys and I'm not sure that Vanderbilt will do that despite what we want them to do and that scares me a little bit. I agree with you. The, the one other thing, and I, I, I'm not pointing fingers at any one player, I'm not sure there is a leader on this football team on either side of the football. Usually you have one or two guys that are vocal, and, and, and maybe that's there and I just don't see it, but I don't see a lot of, uh, you know, not that you have to have a rah-rah guy, but just a leader to turn to. Uh, you know, I guess Will's the closest guy on offense, and he's had his, you know, blips on the radar. So uh, it's just not a good mix right now, and these guys have got six more football games. I will say this, I, I think that uh, because offensively they've got some weapons like we talked about, if they can ever get a, either one of the two things, either have a game where they get three sacks or have a game where they cover people and they'll get thrown over top of their head, if they ever have one of those games, then we might have a happier ending. I think the difference in this one was, one, the rushing game, and two, Mizzou was able to get pressure with four. Vanderbilt had right. to send six, seven to get pressure. And they didn't do it a lot. Didn't do it a whole lot. But I want to go back to that leadership comment you had. I think Bradley Ashmore is a good leader. Who else, though? I, I, and, that's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and Ken Seals, I think, showed some leadership today. Got on the offensive line a little bit. I didn't personally see that, but that's what I, what was going around. I in did the press see box. that. Yeah. I, you're right. I did see that. I, I, I was proud of Ken. I thought he played well. The play fake again right there was that was a pro play. And uh, he, he's he's got some things you know that he can do that they didn't let him do today. And I understand why. First game back, but next moving into the next week, assuming he starts, uh, you know, at Florida, uh, I think you'll see him open the offense up even more. It's going to be interesting to follow this week, kind of that quarterback, I wouldn't say controversy, but that quarterback kind of mix up here. Yeah. AJ Swan was dressed for warmups, was dressed throughout the game, was available, but Ken Seals was the starter. I think a lot of that was his elbow injury, but it's hard to know exactly how much versus other things. Ken Seals did some good things today, certainly brings up a conversation. AJ Swan, I think, allows you to have more of that explosive passing in that Vanderbilt needs but also we've seen the mistakes he makes. Right. And Ken Seals hadn't made those mistakes except for that one interception. So it feels like you're kind of going with one extreme or the other. Ken Seals proved that maybe he can throw it down the field a little bit, but when it mattered, didn't do that a whole lot. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what direction Vanderbilt goes in. Do they go in the composure and leadership route, or do they go with the big time arm and maybe live with some of those mistakes? I don't know what the better option is at this point. Maybe it's Ken Seals next week, I think. With the way he played today, maybe he deserves an opportunity next week. I do. I mean, you think the kid hadn't played in, what, a year and a half or whatever, uh, any meaningful snaps, and he got it, got this under his belt today, made the one big mistake. That's really the only one I saw. I don't know if you saw something I didn't, but just the pick in the end zone. And I'm not sure if Justin Ball cut off the route or if he just overthrew it in the corner. I, I don't know. I don't know what the, who, whose fault that was. But anyway, it, it, it was uh, that was his only real big mistake I felt like. And I think he will start next week. It kind of feels like – that was really similar to what derailed Vanderbilt last week. It felt like that was the play that kind of put this one out of reach. Although Vanderbilt made that late run, kind of got back into this game a little bit, made it a little bit interesting. It's going to be really hard to come back from that when you throw it away in the red zone and yeah. turn it over. It felt like a pretty similar thing last week to when A.J. Swan threw it away and gave Kentucky that touchdown to end Vanderbilt's 13-0 run. Again, same story. Different, different kind of outcome this week. Vanderbilt was a lot more composed, did some things better than it did last week. But still, it ends in the same way, and I think that's 
really frustrating for this group. It's very frustrating. And you know, I was thinking in the end of the first half there, we'll, we get a turnover, but there's no time on the clock when we get it. That's the kind of the luck we have. We force a turnover and the half's over. <laughs> so that doesn't help you at all. But uh, yeah. yeah, we've got we got six more of the midway and they're sitting at two and four. I thought we'd be three and three right now. And we're not, so all you can do is keep playing. Yeah, it feels like the goals for this team have kind of readjusted heading into the year you want to be six and six and I think that's still their desire but as a fan base you're kind of looking towards can we pull an upset here or there can we show that there's something in this group I think that's a really disappointing thing as well yeah this kind of, a little bit reminds me of the remember the, the two years that we had to win our last two conference games to make a bowl that's I don't even know that that's in reach with this group I don't know because they have so many flaws that you can see on film with the secondary uh, mostly the corners and uh the pass rush that when people see it on film, they know how to execute against you. Yeah, when you can't get pressure with four, that's an issue. Yeah. When your corners play cloud coverage and are still giving up big plays, I know. that's an well, issue. When they're playing man and they give up big plays, that's an issue. Even Jalen Mahoney got burned over there on yeah. his first or second drive, and that's a guy that's been pretty reliable to this point. I don't know what you do on defense and on offense. You have playmakers. However, we talked about these same mistakes over and over and over again. And I don't know how much we can harp on it more. It's just Vanderbilt it's shooting himself in the foot. It's going to continue unless continue. unless the kids, you know, you come out one day and you wind up getting a bunch of turnovers. That's a, that's got that'll keep you in the game. That's the only thing. The only thing. Yeah, it's really hard to win football games when you can't run it. You can't get pressure. Your cornerbacks give up big plays. You make mistakes in the one area you're good at, which is throwing the ball down the field. I think Vanderbilt has to come out with a tear on fire next week in Florida. And, aggressive throwing it down the field. I think that was a problem I had with some of their play calling early was they tried to protect Ken Seals too much. That's yeah. an old guy and I think you need to be aggressive throwing the ball down the field. I think you'll see it next week. I, th I do. I think they did that in the first half because I thought the second half they, op they opened him up more. What are you looking for for this team next week? The same type of thing except again I don't know what you do between now and next Saturday about your either bringing extra folks uh, you know you, you got a different type of offense uh, Obviously, the running game, if we hold Florida 130 yards rushing, we might be in the game because I don't know that they'll throw it over top of our head. They like to throw a lot of, vert not vertical routes, they like to throw a lot of horizontal routes <clears throat> and, uh, you know, drag routes and stuff like that. So maybe we at least keep them in front of us. It may take them longer to score. <laughs> but offensively, I still feel like there's something left there. Defensively, got to bring extra folks. And I know we had a big injury today. I, I think one of the Patterson kids is. Look like yeah, a knee. I don't know how bad. Yeah. I don't know how bad it is, but uh, got to get a few more bodies healthy too, and, and that that'll always help Vanderbilt. Yeah, I think the health was something worth noting as well. Ricky Wright looked a step slow today. I don't know how much of his health he has right now. Jalen Mahoney was injured through a lot of the week. B.J. Anderson was out. Vanderbilt has a lot of injuries in that secondary. Savion Riley as well. Feels like they got to get healthy there, especially with the way their corners have struggled. Yeah, we need <clears throat> we need help. All hands on deck. You got any eligibility left? I got four years. There you go. Maybe five if I can get a COVID year. Okay, Joey. I'll fix you for some pads and a helmet here in a minute. <laughs> right. <laughs> Going back to the offense today, let's let's dive a little bit deeper on the offense. Ken Seals was kind of protected through the first half, like we mentioned. They tried to kind of counteract that with the running game a little bit. Couldn't work. What are some things that you think hampered the offense throughout the night? Well, again, uh, the, the up front guys not, not doing their job a lot. There was a whole lot of penalties in the first half. I don't know the number where we were moving offensively and defensively we're jumping. I don't know whether he uh, was bobbing his head or what, but we, we had trouble with that early in the game. We cleaned that up at halftime, but we gave away up, you know, 30, 40 yards with that. There's not a whole lot, honestly, that you can do. You just got to get kids to play better. And, if and, you know, if it's not there, it's not there. There's nothing, uh, you know, okay, yeah, you recruited these kids or whatever it may be, but, and you're in year three. And I'll argue to my death that it's really year two. Because, like I said, I've been here a long time, and I know what he took over. And I know where you're at. You're in year two. You're not in year one. You can say what you want to out there. I, I, I've lived it. I know. <laughs> right. Going to kind of the fourth quarter and what the offense showed then, talk to me about some positives. Obviously, Junior Sherrill made that really nice play, put on the burners yeah. for his first college touchdown. I think that's a positive you point to. Will Shepard finally got going again, was really quiet through the first half, and then all of last week was quiet as well. But feels like maybe he's kick-started something that he can take into Florida. And then the biggest positive for me is probably Cedric Alexander and the way he was able to catch the ball. 
didn't do a whole lot on the ground, but was a real safety valve for Kent Seals, and yes. Lord knows they needed a safety blanket back there. And, and, and you're right, he presented himself out of the backfield better than the other two backs did, I felt like. Now, the other thing, I, I don't know, today we didn't do it much, but to help this offensive line, whatever we can do with the backs to chip, because we're going to have to throw the ball 70% of the time. We're going to have to. It's obvious to me after six games. So we, I think it's key to get London Humphreys back. Today, you know, last week the tight ends were involved. Didn't see that much today. I don't know how many targets there were, but last week we had 10 targets and seven completions for like 60 yards. I think that needs to happen more. Right. The passing game has to be the point of emphasis. Sure. Here. And it sure. feels like at times it hasn't really been, and I think that's a big problem. Agree. I totally agree with you. Moving into the defense. Yeah. Let's talk some positives. I don't know how many there are. I think Vanderbilt stopped the run pretty well in the first half, but really wore down as the night went on. SEC's leading rusher came in here, only had 19 yards in the first half, and kind of exploded in the second half. Yeah. And I think that's been a theme with this defense. This, I guess it's not really a positive, but uh, Vanderbilt's defense is really worn down in the run game. Well, you, I don't know what the snap counts were, but I think they had time of position by 10 or 11 minutes. So if you're on the field for 11 more minutes of defense, that's, that answers a little bit of that. Yeah, and those are two physical backs. Really difficult to stop that when you're facing Brady Cook, who had 395 yards, four touchdowns, yeah. no interceptions. Really, really difficult to stop that, especially when their playmakers are on the outside beating your guys one on one. And Clark Lee talks a lot about one of 11 winning your one on one matchups. Vanderbilt did not do that today. No. It hasn't really done that on perimeter all season outside of Will Shepard here and there, London Humphreys here and there, maybe Jaden McGowan, who they got involved on a jet sweep or two today. He's actually their leading rusher through a lot of the first half. I think he might have ended the day as their leading rusher, which tells you something. Vanderbilt's defense, though, is anything here fixable? Uh, I mean, the safeties, I think, are fine. They've done a good job. Uh, again, if we can't find a bring up some blitz packages to get pressure on quarterbacks, uh, we're not talented enough at corner to, you know, if like, the only thing we can hope for is that they throw an errant pass because when you're playing seven yards off a guy and he still runs right by you, you got the issue. And, you know, and I don't want to pick on kids individually, but I'm just saying it is what it is. And, uh, you know, there's kids make plays, but you got to make them over and over. You got to keep, especially get off the field on third down. We don't do that very well either. Uh, so defensively, we probably have more work to do than we do offensively. I would agree with that. One thing I did like defensively was the aggressiveness shown. I think there was a lot of good blitzing early that threw Mizzou off. That only lasts so long with this defense, though. I know. That's what I'm saying because after you don't, after you don't bring the pressure, and he stands back there and he can he can eat a ham sandwich while he's standing there. I mean, me and you can do that. We just pitch and catch. That's all it is. Especially when you're thrown to an NFL player that, like, exactly. Hunter Burden, who. Yeah, I mean, and he's going to get some freshman. Yes. You know, Martell Heights on him. Yeah. And when they got that matchup, good coaching by Drinkwitz, boom, there they go. They know what they're doing. You know, and, that, and everybody can coach, everybody can play. It's just uh, who's got the better players right now? We don't have enough of them. Yeah, I think the only position I'm happy with on that defense is the safeties. Linebacker, you lose Kane Patterson. He was standing on that sideline for most of the second half with the crutch. I think it's a bad sign. It seems like that one won't end well for Vanderbilt. It has some depth in that room. Brian Longwell was around the ball like a lot today. Yeah. He was around the ball a lot today. He's physical. He's fast. He does some good things. Yeah. Is it enough, though? I'm not sure, especially since Prince Kali seems to be redshirting. That's a guy who I think can step in next year and make some plays. Right now, though, I'm not sure exactly what they have at linebacker either. I, I think, you know, we just got to hope that people get well. You know, I, I didn't notice today, and I want to ask you this question. Did Christian James play much? I didn't notice it. He played a lot early. He wasn't super noticeable, though. Okay, obviously. I think he's just got to get his, again, game legs under him. Uh, there's not a whole lot of answers right now. There really isn't. We just got six games left. And I, like I said, we played, not today, but the first five weeks, we played Santa Claus. We need somebody to give us a, a jump start. We need somebody to go out here and play back. So we can do something well and get some confidence. That's the other thing. The confidence has got to be at a low ebb. It has to be. When you sit there and watch them throw the top of it, you go down and make a nice drive, score, get back within 10 twice, and then they just come right back to where the top of you again. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's tough to deal with. Yeah, I wanted to make this show longer, but it feels like, I mean, There's what, else. what else is there to talk about? It's complimentary no. football not happening. Yeah. I like that Clark Lee was a little fired up throughout the game. I think that's something people have complained about a lot, but that only goes so far. This team needs to pr provide its own energy. It has to be player-led at some point, and right now it feels like it's not that way. You know, and I I'll bring Tim Corbin on this because he's the most successful coach I've ever been here in any sport. Tim always says at some point you got to give the, the kids the keys to the car, and you sit in the back seat and let them drive. 
I think Clark wants to do that with this team, but there isn't anybody ready to drive. Yeah, he should not be having to hold the guys accountable through no. press conferences. No. This is not a benevolent dictatorship right now. Yeah. And does it have to be? I'm not sure, but it certainly has to be more player led. Luke, final thoughts? Nothing. I do want to mention that one play. Uh, that ball hit the Ricky in the helmet, didn't it? The one they tried to call targeting yeah, on? Yeah, I don't know. That was a pitiful call. But anyway, <laughs> that didn't have anything to do with winning or losing. But no. that was a, the worst call today for the reference. I don't have any final thoughts except what we've already covered. There's nothing to say except uh, I think for, the, for Vanderbilt to win an SEC game moving forward is somebody else going to have to play their A game. They're going to have to play their C game, and we're going to have to play our A game. Yeah. Looks like a 2-10 and ten team right now, and I don't think we expected us to say that. Heading no. into the year. No, I, I mean, thought this would be a bowl team. I'll be in Gainesville next week. Maybe not talking about the same thing, but at this point, what's there to what's what optimism is there that I won't be talking about the same thing? I'm Joey DeWire. He's Luke Wyatt, the man, the myth, the legend, and we're at First Bank Stadium for the first or for the last time in two weeks. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. Thank you. Peace. God bless.